Okay, a couple of <laughs> assumptions and a couple of problems with this before we look at it. You see where they started. I have um, Mr. Martin sort of approaching, coming down the sidewalk. There's questions or conflicts about that. Was it bushes? Was it sidewalk? Was it behind me? Um, and of course, you can see it. Um, it's lit. If it was real weather and lighting conditions, we would be looking at a black screen. So some artificiality that I've had to include in the animation to show you is just things like that. Um, but what I want you to look at is how the event may have happened at the T intersection and how things sort of progress from there and how that comports with some of the evidence. T intersection, the first, there's the shot to the nose, we contend. Number one right there is where the flashlight is found. George's small flashlight is key. I didn't have any movement except to get them to the spot of the eventual shooting because we don't really know what happened, although George, did, George Zimmerman did say that he tried to push him off and tried to push him away. I think in the video there were movements like this that you saw. Whatever, somehow they got those 25 or 30 feet to the area where we know things happened because this perspective right here, you see that column on the left-hand side, this is John Good's uh, patio, where he was actually um, standing and he came out. The items match, just so you know, the items match precisely the areas where all the evidence was found and the numbers match the uh, um, graphs that are already in um, evidence before you, so you'll see eight, one, two, three, all of those match up because they came from the same data. What I've done on this is I've now begun the 911 call because it's pretty close to time synced to John Good's event because you remember he testified, he was looking at what he saw, eight to 10 seconds, he went inside, decided to make the phone call to 911. We use that as about 20 seconds or so, an assumption, I agree because Jenna Lauer had testified it took her about 20, 25 seconds to make the decision and dial 911. So we sort of had to figure out exactly the timeline as best we can. Um, maybe both, I'm not sure. There's just someone screaming outside. Hey, what's the address that they're near? Address is taken out. Please. Is this an right now? Now this is when, according to Mr. Good's testimony, he came out and saw what he saw. What we've done is take away the animation and just use three different figures or positions because this is what he said he saw. He said when he came out, he saw them sort of straddled one on top of the other. And then he saw them move towards the sort of parallel. We were having confusion with horizontal, vertical, parallel, and perpendicular trial, but I think the indication was he was they were parallel and maybe on the concrete. So that's gonna come up next. Yeah. Okay. And is it a male or female? The second position where he said this is the mounted position or where the ground and pound was occurring. This is where he said it happened closer up to the cement. Uh, again, consistent with what Mrs. Zimmerman was saying when he was talking to the officers. Or you decide if it's consistent or not. It sounds like a male. And you don't know why? I don't know why. I think they're yelling help, but I don't know. The third position is when John Good, as he was leaving, said that they sort of come down away a little bit. Mr. Zimmerman said that he was sort of trying to shimmy or to get off specifically being on the concrete. And this is also put in there, and again, there are some assumptions in this animation, because the next position that you're going to see is the position just after the shot. This is the position where we contend the shot happened. He looks hurt. I can't see him. I don't want to go out there. I don't know what's going on. The angle 
of those two people, obviously one sort of over the other. You remember Dr. DeMaio's testimony and other people's testimony, even Mr. Root, I think, testified that um, because of the way the clothing is, that if leaning over, it was consistent with the gunshot, that being contact, not pressed to the chest, but contact with the clothing, and then about two to four inches away from the chest. Now you see we have George Zimmerman on top with the red. Um, his testimony was shot him, that Trayvon Martin fell sort of off into the left. You'll look at the scene photographs where you see Trayvon Martin's feet are sort of in, someone calls it a bicycling position. They just, I would argue, consistent with having been shot and fell off to the left, his side, and then fell onto his stomach. George Zimmerman then got on top as she testified to, at least, to move out the hands. First gunshot. You just hear gunshot? Yes. How many? This one. Can we get you? Now, this right here, by the way, what you're seeing is what it's called a 50 millimeter perspective. The human eye sees things at about 49.5. Well, I can't tell you that because I don't know if that's in evidence. Anyway, it's at a 50 millimeter perspective, um, similar to what people see when they look, which is what John Good had and which is what this has right here because this is Selma Moore's perspective. This is the column that she sort of said she looked out and around. And the timing is appropriate because we had it about six, seven, eight seconds from the time of the shot, which is when you remember when Miss Moore did her sort of walk around um, in the courtroom, she said and if you timed it, um, it was about eight seconds thereabouts. So she took, hear the shot, react to the shot, walk around, come around, go outside, oh, shimmy through the door, look out, and that's what she saw. So she would have seen, uh, at least according to George Zimmerman's story, she would have seen George on top. Um, spreading out the hands. And she said she saw the foot move. She said that at that point, Joyce Zimmerman sort of got up, looked around. You remember her testimony. And we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Um, so, this is what she saw. Or at least her perspective. And then... No, no come here. This is now the rest of the 911 call. No one, I don't know. You've heard it. It's not particularly significant to the event. Now. Because Hear me. Hear. nobody said that they saw anything of relevance beyond that from this one. Thank you, Your Honor. 